This video is sponsored by Walmine. Go to walmine.com slash plain bagel to create your free account. In 2015, Canopy Growth, a Canadian marijuana company, ended the year with roughly 98 million shares outstanding. That means that if you purchased a million shares, you respectively would have owned 1% of the company's business. Fast forward to the end of 2018, however, and the company reported that their share count had skyrocketed to 343 million shares. Meaning that over the past four years, the company increased its share count by 250%. And your 1 million shares that you had purchased would now only represent 0.3% of the company. This is a phenomenon known as share dilution. And it's something that negatively impacts the value of the shares you hold. In some cases, this share dilution can allow the company to meaningfully improve their business. Many startups, such as those in the weed space, argue that these actions are necessary to grow rapidly. But sometimes, dilution will destroy shareholder value, even if the company in question ends up making more money. How? Let's find out on today's Plain Bagel. When a company first goes public, the ownership of the firm is divided into a specified number of shares, and shareholders who purchase these shares become partial owners of the business. For example, if a company's ownership was split amongst 1,000 shares and you purchased 100 of them, you would effectively own 10% of the company. But after a company has IPO'd, that is, when they've gone public, you may see more shares issued by the company. This increases the number of shares outstanding and effectively reduces how much of the company each share represents. With our example, if after you purchase your 100 shares, the company issues another 500 shares, then your percentage ownership would be reduced from 10% to 6.7%. This is share dilution, something that occurs when a company issues shares in addition to what's already outstanding. And while the average person may not care about their shares losing voting power, it can have other negative effects on your position. Why might a company issue extra shares? Well, there are a few reasons, the first of which may simply be to raise extra capital. You see, a company may have a project or expansion that they want to pursue, and if they don't have enough money on hand to fund the opportunity, they may carry out what's known as a secondary share issuance, which is like the initial public offering, but it's, well, secondary. So they essentially make new shares and sell them directly to new investors or current investors to raise money. The company may also fund their capital needs with what's known as a convertible security, a type of debt that can be converted into shares. These securities don't initially cause any dilution, but creditors may decide to convert their debt into equity if it appears to be an attractive move, which would naturally boost the number of shares outstanding. A company may also issue shares to carry out a merger or an acquisition. Similar to funding a project, a company may issue new shares directly to an acquired business as a method of payment, thus increasing the number of shares outstanding. Finally, we sometimes see shares diluted as a result of employee compensation. You see, a company will sometimes provide employees stocks or stock options, instruments that can be turned into stocks at some point in the future as part of their compensation. This is particularly popular with executives as it aligns their interests with those of the average shareholder. But while this may help reduce conflicts of interest, it also leads to, well, you guessed it, share dilution. So, there are a number of reasons why a company may increase their share count, but are they worth it? Well, the answer to this really depends on the specifics. If a company is unable to improve their operations with the money they raise, then the share dilution is almost certain to hurt the value of your stock. And it's pretty easy to see why. More shares mean more investors laying claim to a company's profits. And if these profits aren't growing to compensate for the higher number of shares, then you are likely to see the stock price fall. For example, imagine you own one of 10 million shares of a company that makes $50 million a year. In this case, your share of the profits, known as earnings per share, is $5. Now, if the company proceeds to issue another 2.5 million shares and its profits remain at $50 million, then your earnings per share the following year will go down to $4. In addition, when a company issues more shares, they generally have to do so at a price that is lower than the current market price of the stock. This inherently reduces the value of your holding. If your stock was worth $50 and your company is selling the shares for $47, it lowers the market price of your position. So, share dilution sounds like a pretty big ripoff at this point. A company essentially raises money at the investor's expense. 
In some cases, however, shard dilution may allow your company to materially improve its business, and the pain caused by the shard dilution may be offset by the improved profitability of the firm. Going back to our example, imagine that the company issues the additional 2.5 million shares, but the money they raise from the issuance is used to buy a company with intellectual property that is expected to greatly improve the company's margins. And the next year, they see their earnings jump to 87.5 million. In this case, your earnings per share will increase from $5 to $7, a pretty solid return. So even though your percentage claim over the company's earnings has gone down, the size of the profit pie as a whole has gone up to compensate for this, and your sliver ends up being worth more. So if a company can achieve a high enough return on equity with the money they receive from a share issuance, the impact of share dilution may be offset. That being said, it's important to be skeptical of companies issuing a lot of shares. Because while raising capital may allow a company to grow, it doesn't guarantee that management will be successful in expanding the business. Worse yet, the process of issuing shares can and has been abused in the past. While more money can allow a successful company to improve their operations, an impaired business may issue shares just to keep their head above water, or worse yet, to take money from investors. For example, imagine that the company you are invested in is a startup with negative margins, meaning that they are actually losing money and the margins aren't improving over time. The company already has a pile of debt on their hands and they are running low on cash. So to keep the lights on, they decide to issue more shares. They claim that these shares are going to help the company turn around. But in reality, the money simply goes towards paying executives a little bit more money and keeping the firm afloat for just a little while longer. Clearly, in this situation, the firm has effectively taken money from shareholders and likely won't provide any material benefit as a result. So what a company does with the money they raise from a share issuance is very important here. After all, raising capital through a share issuance is expensive for a company's current investors. It's even theoretically more expensive for a firm than raising their debt levels. So if a company doesn't have a meaningful strategy for improving operations with the money raised, then they are essentially destroying shareholder value. For this reason, it's important to monitor a company's share count over time. And if a company is looking to issue shares, find out what the money is going to be used for. On the other hand, if you notice that a company's share count is actually going down, that is usually a good sign for investors. And in fact, many value investors look for that because it means that a company is buying back their shares. A buyback is when a company purchases their shares from investors and effectively cancels them. They essentially increase the worth of your position by reducing the number of shares a company's profits are split across. You can view them as being similar to when a company pays its investors dividends, because both involve the company returning capital to its investors. It's important to see how a company is funding its buyback, but generally speaking, buybacks add value to your shares. So as mentioned, make sure to check out a company's outstanding share count and look into how the number has changed over time. If a company is buying back shares with free cash flows, great. If they're issuing shares, make sure they have a strong argument for raising the capital. And be skeptical of companies promising a turnaround when they have an impaired business. Finally, when looking at a company's per share metrics, such as EPS, make sure to take into account the company's diluted numbers. As mentioned earlier, a company may have other securities outstanding that can be converted into shares at some point in the future. And diluted numbers show you what the per share metric would be if all these outstanding securities were turned into stocks. It's a great way to conservatively analyze a company's operations. So share dilution can sometimes be a means to a positive end, but it's something that investors need to scrutinize. After all, if a company wants to raise money at your expense, they better have a good argument for it. And with that said, we're out of time. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you like what we're doing here, make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell icon if you want notifications about future videos. If you have any feedback or topics you want me to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. For The Plain Bagel, my name's Richard Coffin. Thanks for joining me today. This video is sponsored by Walmine. If you're someone who researches your own investment ideas, or if you like to monitor how your personal investments are doing, Walmine is a great tool for retail and professional investors alike that makes researching companies and keeping a pulse on the markets easy. 
It's got a pretty intuitive and user-friendly interface and a lot of handy tools, including a heat map, insider trading information, a stock screener, and even a portfolio tracking tool that you can use for your personal holdings. Probably the biggest difference between this site and other pages like Yahoo Finance and Morningstar though, is its simplicity. When you search a company, you're brought to a profile that has all of its information in one spot. You'll find their finances, trading multiples, recent headlines, filings, and a bunch of other details all in one page, making it very easy to quickly get an overview of the ticker. You can use the website for free, and if you really like the service, there are options available to upgrade your account. Make sure to use the following URL or the link in the description down below to create your account and let them know I sent you their way. If you find yourself struggling to get the information you need about the companies you're researching, or you simply want a user-friendly tool to track your positions, I encourage you to check out Walmine.